Hi there, this is Carl Irwin with a uh, short tutorial here. We're going to look uh, a little bit at LMMS, uh, but mostly what we're going to look at is a new sound font uh, that I'm uh, making available. Uh, and this is not actually a sound font that I created, but it's one that I'm mixing together. I'm using a few different already available uh, choral vocal sound fonts uh, that you can find in that 3.5 gigabyte uh, pack. Uh, set that I pointed you to in a previous tutorial. I'll put that link uh, for that uh, in the description for this video. Um, but what we're going to use is we're going to use uh, these uh, sound fonts, a uh, Floristan A Choir, uh, the KBH Real Choir, and the uh, Female Choir um, M sound uh, that you can find here. There might be another one in there I can't remember. I think I might have used one of the other A Choirs as well. Um, but what I did is I took these uh, uh, various sound fonts, which are already very good uh, kind of generic vowel sound sound fonts and I mixed them together uh, into a single sound font layering up their uh, different uh, waveforms and samples and then I added a couple of samples of my own that I recorded. I've discovered that uh, there are a number of really good um, vo uh, vowel sound fonts out there like these but there aren't very many consonant uh, sound fonts available uh, and certainly there are not really any sets, free sets of uh, sound fonts that have multiple consonants uh, and multiple vowels uh, uh, together. Uh, there are some proprietary uh, sample sets that you can purchase uh, for quite a bit of money uh, along with the um, sampling engines that come with them uh, that have uh, the full complement of vowel and consonant sounds uh, that are mixed together in such a way that you can use a, a separate editor, a word builder, in order to generate some fairly realistic uh, choral kinds of performances. Uh, there are also some other uh, sets, sampled sets, that are not nearly as expensive that have just a few consonant and vowel uh, kinds of samples that can be mixed together to generate kind of a dead language uh, sort of uh, performance, uh, like a Latin or Greek or something like that, where you have uh, just some very basic consonant and vowel sounds put together to generate that sort of uh, foreign kind of language. Um, and that got me to thinking that really you don't need a whole lot to do that. All you need are maybe two different vowels, maybe the A ah and the O, oh, uh, and then really only a few consonant sounds, such as uh, uh, the hard consonant sounds like a K sound, a K sound, uh, a CH sound, CH, an SH, sh, uh, a T sound, a T kind of sound, uh, maybe a, um, a soft uh, F sound, F kind of sound, uh, and maybe, uh, you know, one one uh, a consonant sound like an M or an N or something like that. And if you had those, uh, you could probably generate a fairly passable uh, dead language sort of performance. Uh, so it got me to thinking about maybe making one of these myself. So what I did is I recorded uh, some hard consonant sounds and then I used these other sound fonts and I mixed them all together to generate uh, this sound font that I'm going to make available uh, to you via a link. Uh, and what this has is it has, it's called by the way, choir consonants, and it has these uh, different presets in it. It has a an S H A sound, sha. It has an S H O, shu. It has a, a K A H, ka, and a ku, a cha, and a chu, fa, fu, ta, tu, ma, mu, a, and then u, which are pretty standard, uh, widely available syllables down here. So it has all of these available to you, and then I found that what we can do is in our performance we can tie this to an automation track that will then uh, uh, select from those presets uh, at will. So we have here, let me scroll down so we can see, this is the uh, automation track, and it's selecting between the presets uh, 0 through I believe 10 was the top one. Uh, and then right before, you have to go just before the syllable actually occurs in the music. Let me pull up the uh, MIDI track here. And get this out. So we have our piano roll editor here, and then we have the uh, consonants down here. Let me scroll to where we can see our MIDI data. And then down here you can see our presets. So you can see just prior to the performance of the note, 
you need to uh, put in a location where the preset will be selected and it will key switch to those samples and, and thereby kind of uh, doing a bit of a word builder action. So uh, what I ended up with something like this. Now when it's by itself it's not, it, honestly it's not that terribly realistic. Um, it, it's closer uh, to realism than uh, perhaps what we're used to. Um, let me see here. And there we go. Here's what we have. So here are the choir consonants. This is an arrangement of the Duel of the Fates. I've, I needed to pick something that you might recognize. So this is John Williams from uh, Star Wars Episode One, uh, Duel of the Fates. Uh, probably one of the only good things that came out of those movies was the music, uh, unfortunately. But uh, this is this is what I've come up with. Let me play play you a little bit. So we'll stop it right there. Um, you can see that uh, even for some of its failings, when you have the uh, parts kind of mixed in with other instrumentation, it starts to become passable. Particularly over here, you can hear those consonant sounds with the very, very rapid uh, enunciation going on in the part. Um, and, and that's a, you know, that's kind of a cool thing maybe, maybe to experiment around with. So I'm making the sound font available. Just a couple things about it. Um, you certainly need to take the time to choose your consonants carefully. Uh, I tried kind of random selections on the consonant sounds and found that didn't work. I, I had to go in there and, and choose specifically when I wanted presets to uh, uh, engage in particularly which ones I wanted in what order I wanted to. So uh, randomization didn't seem to work very well as I could find. The second thing I did is that I uh, duplicated, um, much like what we talked about in the last tutorial, you can see this is not a very complete um, uh, sequence put together here, but I, I did start to put some doubling together. I've got doubled up instruments with various articulations to help with the realism. Uh, this does have uh, all of the um, uh, pre-reverb uh, kind of you know, organization that, that I, I pointed to in the last tutorial for each section, and then a master reverb on the outside uh, also has additional uh, EQ for each section. So this is uh, headed towards realism. Uh, but one thing that I needed to do is I found that I needed to treat it. I needed to treat the choir just like I'm treating the other instruments, where I needed kind of duplicate uh, uh, examples for articulation. So what I ended up doing is on top of my uh, consonant sounds, I added another 
another uh, layer that is just using the ma sound, that uh, kind of consonant M sound, and it's really quiet. The gain is very, very low, but it just helped to tie together uh, the separation, the way the sound font is built. There's a lot of separation between the consonant sounds and then the um, vowel sounds that come after that. So very quickly, actually, just to hear each one of these, um, this is the first one, uh, the uh, uh, preset zero, Okay, here's preset uh, two, which is the oo syllable. This is a uh, preset, uh, sorry, preset two, which is ka. Hopefully you can hear that. Uh, ku. It's a fairly well-defined closed off oo, uh, the way the uh, layers mix together. Cha. Here is chu. It works pretty well in all registers. Fa. So you can hear that in rapid succession you would only hear the consonant sound so it helps to have that second layer uh, in the MIDI uh, sequence. Foo. Ta. Some of these are better than other. I find, uh, I find that the ta and the ka are really really good. Two. And ma. Now this is created by enveloping. These are actually not using any sounds that I recorded. It's enveloping uh, an initial attack with the uh, female M sound and then combining that with the oo or the ah sound. Mu. Some of these sounds are three or four layers deep, so you want to make sure that your sound font player can play back all of the layers. Otherwise, this may not work. It's kind of a big sound font. It's about uh, 26 megabytes. Ah. Uh. Now, in order to keep it consistent, I made an ah uh and an oo uh that also has all the multiple layers that the others have so that it would sound like those other uh, samples. And the last one, oo. Uh. So there it is. Um, I'll put this uh, into the uh, description for this video. You can uh, download this file and uh, you know make use of it. Edit it any way that you want. Um, you probably, if you're going to use it, uh, I wouldn't redistribute it in any way without giving credit. Uh, at least to these initial uh, files that are in here. So I did not change the names of the layers. Uh, the layers, the samples are the original sample names uh, from the uh, original creators. In fact, I think some of the metadata uh, that goes along with those samples is, is still in the uh, sound font file. I did not change that or edit that in any way. I'm just uh, layering up these uh, pre-existing sound fonts. So um, you do not have to give any credit to me for the sound font. Just feel free to use it, uh, play around with it, or change it in any way that you want. Uh, and also, you know, experiment around with the idea of layering up the sound fonts that you have to generate new uh, sound font combinations. Um, you know, that can be a very, very uh, rewarding thing for you to do, and it may help you eliminate a lot of this layering that you have to do inside of uh, uh, your MIDI sequencer. Uh, one thing that I did a long time ago is I put together all of my favorite sound fonts. For example, here, uh, my trumpet sound font. I'm using one sound font for all of these, and uh, the sound font has all of these presets that are from many different sound fonts that I have used over the years and I put them all together into one trumpet sound font so I would have easy key switching access to them uh, if I needed to do that so um, yeah it's just a good practice uh, to be doing that anyway but uh, anyway just wanted to share this with you and uh, I wish you uh, good luck and happy editing and mixing and rendering